Today we're talking about the old landline telephones sitting around the house, the values of them, and how to tell what's worth what. Hey, it's Don. Today we're talking about vintage phones, the values, what to look for, and what not to buy when you're out sourcing for old phones. Now, most people have an old phone laying around the house. This is one of the most common ones, these black. This one, I think, is a Bell. Yeah, this one's a Bell. Most of these sorts are very common. They made millions of these kind here. Same thing goes for the white phones. There are a ton of standard colors. Black and white were one of the most popular styles. Now, back at some point, the phone company actually owned the phone. You were just basically leasing it to them. If you stopped service, you had to give them the phone back. At a certain point, they changed that policy, and people could get their own phone off a shelf or something and use it with most any service in the country. And color-wise changed, and the types of phones changed as well. Some things to look for with almost any phone is to make sure it has the cord. Always make sure this is with it. The cord was made specific to match the color of the phone. So if you find one and it doesn't have the cord, you may not be able to find it. Even the phone line cord you want to try and get because, again, you may not be able to match the color. Most people want a complete phone. So usually, if it doesn't have the cords with it, I don't usually mess with it. If it's a black or a white phone because I run into them so often. There are many different colors of phones. Here's like a beige one right here. Now, it doesn't matter so much the brand on some of these, depending on the color. Obviously, some brands sell better than the others. Western Electric, Bell, and things like that usually sell for some decent money. And you want the cords, as I said. This cord matches. This is just a generic one that has been replaced, so it won't carry the value one would if it had all of the original cords for it. Now this one holds a little memory for me because this is the exact same type of phone I had when I was a child at my mom's house. Color wise though, this is a little scarcer than the black and the white. It will garner 20, 25 bucks if you're lucky. On a good day, you may get 40, 45 bucks for a phone like this. Now the black and the white phones usually sell in the 15 to $25 range, depending on if it's complete, the age and such forth as well. Some of the white phones can go for a little more as can and some of the black ones, but it depends on the age. Now we're just talking about this style, this type of phones from this era, these newer ones here. Now if you go back to the 1920s or 30s, most phones are black in color. It's just the material they used. Many of them were metal and they were painted black. They also made green phones right here. Another phone style and color it has the original cord, but it's missing the actual uh, line cord. Either way, this is a little harder to get. These sorts, 35 to 45 bucks or better, depending on the day of the week, the brand and the manufacturer. Now, one very popular in office settings besides the black phones were these brown phones here. They're fairly common. Um, this one's missing the original line cord. It does have the headphone set cord here. Still, you want to make sure they work as well. I always check them out and make sure the dial still spins. If the dial doesn't spin, they can be fixed depending on what's wrong with it. Most of the time when the dial doesn't spin, there's a gunk, there's hair, there's grease, and it hasn't been used in so long, so now it's stuck. Now, if you take off the plastic top case here, you can actually get most of these to work with some WD-40 remove any hair or gunk in there and usually you can play around and get them to work. Now many people tell you these can't be rewired and can't be used in the digital line networks they have today. I use one in our kitchen right now from the 1940s. I have rewired it. We have changed the wiring schematics basically on it. It rings and I can still pick it up and talk to people on that phone as well. Now rewiring these I wouldn't recommend doing if you plan on selling them. Most people will want them original just as they came. Now there are some colors that are well sought after in these styles of phones. Pink is one of the hottest phones out there and those can sell for hundreds three four hundred dollars if you find the right one most all pink phones like the ones we're showing you will get you a hundred bucks plus so if you find a pink one it's vintage it's original you've got at least a good hundred bucks out of it now there are some other colors that are popular the red phone has always been popular like in the movies the alarm phone uh, it kind of reminds me of the batman phone i guess you would say these go extremely well 
50 bucks or so or better on most of these. I've sold some for over 100 bucks, depending on the maker, the date on. Now, many of these two, if you look on the bottom, there may be a date stamped in the bottom of it, stating a date that they were made. Other times you can take off the case and there may be some markings on the internal workings of the phone, which will date it for you. Now, one other aspect on the phones are the cords themselves. Many times you will see that they're not actually in the spiral they should be. These can be fixed. If you've got the patience, you can wind these correctly little by little and fix the issue as you go through it. It will correct it as you do it. Just unplug it when you do it and you can correct those loops in it. It will sell better if it looks decent. A good photo of a phone like this will go a heck of a long ways. Make sure it has a white background as well. That is the best way to sell a decent phone. It will show off the color. Now, besides the pink and the red phones, there's a baby blue phone that always sells for at least 50 to 75 bucks as well. I don't care what version it is, as long as it's 70s or before, it will always sell. The baby blue is very popular. This is a color from the 1950s, as is the pink phone. That's why they're so popular. They go with vintage decor, 1950s kitchen, 1950s living room. This is the style of phone that you would want. These will garner you a premium and they will go for good money. These can go for up to 100 bucks or better depending on the day of the week literally now this one's complete i have the actual line cord the headset cord as well it's all here i wouldn't really look into buying one of these and trying to get top dollar unless you have the cords that go with them it's almost impossible to find blue pink or even red cords sometimes that match the color of the phone sometimes they'll be faded if they were out in the sun the cords can change colors many of these will clean up too many of these you will need to wash most of the time i find these cords here with grease and gunk on them constantly the majority of the ones that i find will be dirty because people People were holding on to this most people never washed their phones throughout my entire childhood it's not something you saw people do other than the headset so these are almost always dirty now these can be washed and donned dish soap actually just don't get the ends wet and if there are any chips or cracks or splits in the cord don't stick them in water wash each little bit by hand now another style of phone are these what's called a princess phone these could have been mounted on the wall they could have sat on a table as well this is another one of the blue ones now this is more of a turquoise blue there's a baby blue, there's a red, there's a pink. Those colors always go best. There's many different versions of the Princess phone itself in many different colors, just like any other phone. The color makes a big difference, as does the date. So if there are dates on the bottom, you will do far better, especially if they're earlier dates, like say from the late 50s. Now this basic style of phone here comes from the vintage style. It's basically a modernization of the original styles of phones. It's just been rounded off. So you will see earlier phones like this one here. Now this is from the 1930s right here. It's metal. This thing weighs around 20 pounds, believe it or not. Even the headset is solid metal as well. Now a phone like this, the value is determined by the brand, the make, and such forth. There's rare phones out there. There's some versions that very rarely show up that they only made hundreds of in some cases. A lot of phones were scrapped during war efforts during World War I and World War II, so a lot of phones were actually scrapped and melted down, so the vintage metal phones just don't show up very often. I usually get 50 to 75 bucks for most of this style from the 1930s. Here's another fairly desirable shape when the phone runs in the opposite direction. So this is basically wider than it is long, which is a different style than the other ones. One other thing to look for to distinguish the age on phones, if you find cords on a phone that is wrapped in cloth, it's usually pretty old, 1940s or before, and this is a 1940s phone as well. And this is about 10 years later than the last phone we just showed you. It's very heavy still, but not as heavy as the other one. The case on some of these now is being made out of Bakelite. So they've lightened the load. It's a little cheaper than putting metal in to them also now this one's in tip-top condition it actually still does work this one i should be able to get 75 to 100 bucks or better because of the condition alone now the phone bases shape means something as well this is an earlier one also this is a desk version late 1920s early 1930s it's fairly heavy i look for parts and pieces either way just this here can go for some good money as well you just have to keep an eye and know which is which these round based ones are fairly early also base shape 
tape is very helpful in dating them as well. This is a plastic case from the very late 1940s through the early 1950s. It still has an Art Deco look and feel to it, as you can see. It does work in every way. You can replace most of the parts as well with this. It's fairly heavy still, but nowhere near the weight of any of the other ones. The newer 50s, 60s, and 70s weigh even less than this one here. Now, obviously, wooden boxed phones do extremely well also, but most candlestick phones will still get you some good money, even if they aren't mounted in a big wooden box. Now, most people understand that the vintage early phones with the wooden boxes and the candlesticks are very valuable, so they don't turn up for reasonable prices these days. These sorts, though, are still missed. These candlestick ones, even when they're reproductions like this one, can still get you some good money. Just because of the shape, this is a bell version here. This one should still go for 95 bucks, even though it's not from the 1910s, 20s era. Now, there are some country-specific phones, phones you only find in certain countries, like this one here. This is a British phone. It's an interesting design. It's one piece. You would actually dial it on the bottom here. You've got an earpiece, and you speak right here. So it's a little weird looking, but it does work. It's convenient. It hangs up very easily by the button right here on the bottom. Now, these I usually can sell for around 40 to 50 bucks almost every time I get them. I mostly would say you would find these in England, but there's many people over here that use them because of how easy they worked and how convenient they were. You didn't need any other parts and you could set this anywhere. Some movies even used this design as a microphone in some sci-fi adventures back in those days. Now still yet other items that you'll run into would be headsets like this one here. Now this is a military headset used by the U.S. government and you would be able to clip this into a line out in the wild somewhere. These are still highly collectible. This is metal. It's actually actually marked with U.S. military markings on the handset here as well. This is the whole unit. They would just tap into a line when they were out in the field, and this would do the trick for them. Now, here's another version of that same basic one. Now, this is one for a ship, so you could pick this up, and it would go to a specific spot every time. There is no way to dial on these. Now, some of these units do have a separate unit that you could add to it where you could dial off as well. Most of these sorts, I get about 20 to 45 bucks on average depending on the condition and the maker the military one i just showed you i usually get around 25 to 40 bucks for those as well now, other headsets I run into are these operator ones. This is from a switchboard or something along that line. And you can usually tell by the size of the plug that's in them. You can also date them by this as well. This is an early one. This is one from Bell South. I've got a bunch of different ones of these. You'll run into them fairly often. Usually, these sorts of headsets will get you 15 to 25 bucks, depending on the version. Now, many people may mix up some of these. There are some military versions of these that come from bombers and ships that can go for hundreds of dollars if you find the right one. So always be on the lookout for any type of military markings. A USN, a US, USMC, or anything like that marked on it will determine whether it's a military or not. Most all military items will be marked. So if you find one, you don't know if it's military, it should be marked somewhere on it. Now they also made hidden phones like this boxed phone here. It's actually hidden in a box. Now these, as long as they work, I usually get 45 to say 70 bucks for. Most of these are plastic cases. Cases, but if you find one actually in a wooden case, you can get some pretty good money out of those. They're made by the normal same phone companies that would make any other phones. These are fairly heavy as well. This one probably weighs around 15 pounds. Now here's a super early and super heavy phone. This is a monster. This probably weighs around 25 to 30 pounds. It has Bakelite on the earpieces. It is solid brass and it's been plated silver as well. It has porcelain finish on it. Now this is a French Republic phone used by the French government at some point. This is early. This is a really nice one. Probably around say World War I through about 1922 or so in that range from what I can find out. Now this one will have obviously the fabric coated wires everywhere. It'll also have a relay mount box here most of them will have this. So if you just find the phone without the little box, many times it will not be as valuable as one that is complete like this one here. Now, obviously, there's tons of different types of phones out there. We're talking about utilitarian item phones today. They make a ton of different ones. Everybody knows about the Mickey Mouse, the Garfield, the hamburger phones. Any of that sort can still garner some value. But the ones most people have problems figuring out are the vintage ones like we just showed you. These sorts 
types of phones can make you a lot of money. They are everyday phones that you will find out across the board, estate sales, garage sales, flea markets, antique malls, even some phones can be found for a reasonable price where you can still make some money. But the one thing you don't want to do is discard any of these phones because even the most basic, say, black or white colored modern day phone of the types we're showing you can still sell for 15 or 20 bucks on a good day as long as they work and they are complete. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts on this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. There are several good places in your home where an extension telephone will be of great convenience and comfort for you and your family. For instance, your kitchen. An extension phone here will save you countless steps every day. Another possibility is your bedroom. At your bedside, an extension phone will give you privacy and a feeling of security at night. Or if there's a playroom or a place where the family spends a lot of time, an extension lets anyone, or everyone, talk on the phone without leaving the room. A handy phone in the garage or workshop will save time and trips the year round. For only pennies a day more than the cost of your present phone, you can have a colorful extension telephone for one of the many places in your home where you work, play, or sleep. Just call your Bell Telephone business office or ask your telephone man.